This is the OTB Network. Hello and welcome to this week's edition of Horses and Courses. I'm Jean Wood. We've just finished another great weekend of racing, some very exciting racing across the country. And we're going to head to Florida to begin the program. They ran on Saturday their usual late autumn Florida series for Florida breads. They had some very good racing. And of course, all the eyes of the racing world had been kind of looking at Calder during the course of the last week because they had picked up two very nice victories over the weekend of Breeders' Cup two week, or a week ago with Awesome Feather and the Juvenile Phillies and of course Big Drama, another Calder-based runner winning the sprint. So obviously nice to see that some of those Calder horses are, uh, are doing well when they're hitting the road. Now it's time to look at some of the Florida breads. On Saturday we'll start things out with the Arthur Appleton Juvenile Turf, two-year-olds at one and a sixteenth miles. And they're off. The Waco kid hopped at the start. He's last. Racing aptitude. Oligarch showing speed. Oligarch now onto the front. Reprised Halo moves up on the far side. They're followed by the Best Glacier and I Like It Two Red Hills. And Waco kid is last after the bad beginning as Oligarch and Daniel Centeno take him through the first quarter mile. And Oligarch has opened up about a three-length lead. Reprised Halo. Racing aptitude. Running second and third as they go to the first turn. Then the Best Glacier. Red Hills outside of that one. The Waco kid is picked up some ground and I like it too is three wide and now nine lengths back of Oligarch through a 23 flat opening quarter. It's Oligarch a clear lead as they run onto the backstretch. Now he leads it by four. Racing Aptitude has moved to second. The best glacier up on the outside. The Waco kid is now fourth and down along the hedge. Reprised Halo has lost ground. In fact now joined by and I like it too and Red Hills being pushed along near the back of the pack as they go that opening half mile 48 seconds flat. Oligarch Oligarch leads them to the far turn. Oligarch in front. The best glacier there stalking from the outer. The Waco kid is now just in behind the leaders. Racing aptitude shuffled back to fourth. Then and I like it too. And they move into the turn chasing Oligarch. Oligarch trying to take them all the way in the Arthur Appleton juvenile turf. And he leads the best glacier a quarter mile from home. The Waco kid is down along the hedge. Pushed along now as racing aptitude tries to rally up three wide. And they still have to get to Oligarch. Oligarch is the leader. Racing Aptitude now closing on the outside. Then the Waco Kid in the best glacier. Racing Aptitude now up to challenge Oligarch. The Waco Kid down along the inside. Racing Aptitude leads the way. Racing Aptitude gets the win. Racing Aptitude won it tight for place and show the best glacier and I like it too. Then the Waco Kid. Racing Aptitude picks up the victory here from just off the pace, two and a half lengths, the better of best the best glacier with I and I like it too, completing the top three at a big price. Off of a maiden special weight win last time out uh, in his second turf try, Racing Aptitude goes off as the favorite at a tick over even money and scores handily. He is a two-year-old son of aptitude from Ecclesiastes by St. Bellato, bred in Florida by Don Disney and owned by the breeder, trained by Howie Tesher and ridden to victory by Luis Saez. Racing aptitude covers the mile in the 16th and 143.72. Next up, Florida breds in the Joe O'Farrell Juvenile Phillies. And they're off. Awkward start for Lily's Hope. She is last in the early going. Devilish Lady sprints out for the lead, and now here comes Come a Callin through from the inside. Ridge Kitten settles down third. They're just in front of Many Crowns, who's now only two and a half lengths off the lead. Then it's Beso Grande, Jill's Dancer. Lily's Hope trying to pick it up after the bad start. She's seven and a half lengths off the lead. Wicked Speed has no early speed. She is second last early on, and the Maracutana will have to pass them all. She's got 11 lengths to make up on Come a Callin and Jack. Rajiv Mirage come a call into the half mile pole leads it a length right now devilish lady there the outside many crowns down tucked on the inside third Ridge Kitten is in the clear she's only two and a half lengths off the lead they're followed now by both Lily's Hope and Beso Grande racing as a team four lengths off the pace of devilish lady who's gone right on by come a call to get the lead devilish lady in front Ridge Kitten running with her come a call is retreating outside the quarter pole Lily's Hope runs into the 
the third spot. Jill's Dancer trying to pick it up from the back of the pack, but they come into the stretch, and it's Devilish Lady and Daniel Centeno set down for the drive, and Devilish Lady pours it on. Now four, five, six lengths in front. Big turn of foot by Devilish Lady. She's well clear at the 16th bowl. Race for place. Beso Grande rallying up outside the Maragutana, but a big effort today from Devilish Lady, and she upsets the field in the Joe O'Farrell Juvenile Phillies. Beso Grande second, the Maracutana and Ridge Kitten. Devilish Lady picks up the victory handily, throttled down seven and three quarter official lengths at 17 to one. Now typically 17 to one shots don't win by seven lengths, but she certainly looked very strong late as she scored over Beso Grande with the Maracutana completing the top three. Off of a third place finish last time out in the Cassidy Stakes here, Devilish Lady, very impressive in victory. She is a dark bear brown daughter of sweet southern saint from Devilish Brunette by Diablo, bred in Florida by Lewis Family Stables Partnership and owned by Car Caroli Racing Stable, trained by Antonio, Antonio Sano and ridden to victory by Daniel Santino. Devilish Lady covers the seven furlongs in 125.39. We'll continue now with stakes racing for Florida Breads in the Bonnie Heath Turf Cup. They're all in line. Hey, I'm there off. Pretty even start. Bim Bam, Tannersville, pick a pocket, Mean Sacks, Mean Sacks, now the quickest of the bunch, and he heads off for the lead. Pick a pocket, settles second, Livingston Street moving up outside of him, then Bim Bam, St. Dinah former having all sorts of trouble at the back of the pack. He is last of the six as they make their way out of the chute and pass the stands for the first time. The leader is Mean Sacks with pressure now from pick a pocket. The opening quarter pretty slow, 25 and one. Bim Bam now takes back in behind those leaders, Third. Livingston Street is checking in behind heels and between horses right now as St. Dinah former goes by hit and Tannersville is the trailer but saving ground about five lengths back of Mean Sacks and jockey Jeffrey Sanchez. Mean Sacks leads him on to the back stretch and that lead is three parts of a length from pick a pocket. Bim Bam tucked in third and now coming off the hedge. Bim Bam trying to shoot the gap between runners after a half mile and a pokey 51 and three. It's still Mean Sacks and pick a pocket. Bim Bam was not able to get there in between those two runners. He's now shuffled back third. Up on his outside is St. Dinah former, then Livingston Street, Tannersville locked in with nowhere to go at the back of the pack, and they move for the far turn. Mean Sacks still leading, pick a pocket. Mean Sacks a half a length, pick a pocket sticking right to him, and they accelerate to the quarter pole. Bim Bam runs along in third, then Livingston Street. Tannersville is trying to shoot the gap down along the inside, and they come to the top of the stretch. Mean Sacks pick a pocket right together. Tannersville looking for room between those two. Bim Bam out on the outside. It's pick a pocket. Now Tannersville shoots the grab down at the inside. Bim Bam still in with a shot. Pick a pocket. Bim Bam, these two down to the line. Pick a pocket in front. Pick a pocket and Bim Bam hit it together in the Bonnie Heath Turf Cup. Pick a pocket completes the uh, win here. A nice effort by this guy who had run in a pretty strong Keeneland allowance race last time out. The th he ran fourth that day. The three horses that finished in front of him all came back to victories out of that performance. And uh, here he scores by a game nose over the late moving Bim Bam, the favorite, with another three year old Tannersville completing the order of the top three. Pick a Pocket is a bay gelded son of Mecky from Lady Cerise by Honor Greats, bred in Florida by Martin Sherry and owned by the breeder. Back with Marty Wolfson after having uh, been uh, with other trainers while out of town. Pick a Pocket and Jermaine Bridgemahan cover the mile in a furlong in 151.39. Next up, older horses in the, in the Jack Dudley Sprint. Hey, I'm there off. Jiu-Jitsu Jax pops the gate and goes right out for the lead at once. But now Tackleberry, who is a beat slow, is going to come on through to challenge Jiu-Jitsu Jax. Here ye, here ye settles third. Now up on the outside, Rusty Charlie a joint third, only a length and a half off the lead. They're clear of Starship Valor. You lucky man down along the rail. Between runners right now runs How's Your Halo. He's got seven lengths to make up. The back markers at this point are Black Gabriel and Sincero, who may be four wide going into the far 
turn. Tackleberry has come on through to take the lead from Jiu-Jitsu Jax, who's coming right back to him on the outside. These two ding-donging into the turn. Here ye, here ye is back in third and two lengths off the lead. Rusty Charlie has lost ground, and it's a long way back to the others as they come past the quarter pole, and it's Tackleberry. Tackleberry and Javier Santiago hugging the rail, and they set sail for the wire. Tackleberry out to a two-and-a-half, three-length lead. Here ye, here ye is trying to bridge the gap. Jiu-Jitsu Jacks back in third. Then Rusty Charlie, Starship Valor. How's your halo from the back of the pack? But it's Tackleberry. Tackleberry, impressive in the Jack Dudley sprint, and he'll win it by four. Here ye, here ye was second. Jiu-Jitsu Jackson, Starship Valor. Tackleberry picks up the victory. This uh, is a horse moving into stakes company for the first time and facing some pretty established sprinters as he scores the victory going away by five and a quarter lengths over Hear Ye, Hear Ye with Jiu-Jitsu Jacks, a horse that uh, we've seen a, quite a bit on the program over the course of the last couple of years. Pretty solid sprinter completing the order of the top three. The winner, Tackleberry, had won two allowance races in a row, both on the front end coming into this spot. He's now four for seven lifetime. He's a bay gelding, a dark bear brown gelded son of Montbrook from Box of Joy by Concerto, bred in Florida by the Ocala Stud and owned by Luis Oliveras, trained by the owner and ridden to victory by Javier Santiago. Tackleberry covers the six and one eleven point eight zero. Next up, it's two-year-olds in the Jack Price Juvenile. And they're off and a very even start. Manisato is flashing speed. I'm a playboy there toward the outside. Uno Caliente between those two. Brock and Rock down along the rail. Then Determinado, Rebo Bobo between runners, only three lengths off the pace. And it's five back to the trailers, Hal and Motine. Manisato has come away with the lead. He's got it almost to length now from I'm a playboy. Uno Caliente going to try to win it from off the pace today. He's a joint third. Brock and Rock down on the inside. Determinado the far side and Rebo Bobo and a a tough spot behind that wall and only three and a half off the pace as they pass that half mile pole. Motine is out of last, but he's still got 10 lengths to make up and Hal has the best view of the field as Manicetto takes him into the turn. Manicetto and Luis Saez open up now to lead it by two, now two and a half. I'm a playboy working harder in that second spot, but he's lost some ground. Determinado trying to rally up in third, then Uno Caliente. Rebo Bobo is under pressure and Manicetto is looking straight Strong at the head of the lane. Monticetto cuts the corner. He is five in front in the Jack Price Juvenile. Monticetto just under a vigorous hand ride. Now under the whip. He's seven, eight, nine lengths in front. Monticetto, a blossoming superstar here. This son of mass media, 10 clear with 70 yards to go. Rebo Bobo Motin battling for the minors. It's Monticetto. Monticetto won it. Rebo Bobo second, then Motin. Monachero picks up the win, showed good early speed, broke fairly alertly, and ran away and hid as the two-to-one favorite from the late-moving Rebo Bobo, who was in from Churchill, where he had run a good second last time out to astrology in the grade three Iroquois. Motin completes the order of the top three. Off of a win last time in a maiden special weight on the front end by seven plus lengths, Monachero completes a uh, double here with a very promising move. Looks like kind of an interesting horse to follow perhaps over the winter time as he gets the opportunity to stretch out. Monachero is a two-year-old son of mass media from Ritzy Blitz by Chris S. Bred in Florida by Roberto Sanson and owned by Leo Asperua Sr. Trained by Leo Asperua Jr. and ridden to victory by Luis Saez. Monachero covers the 7 and 125.77. Next up, it's the John Franks Juvenile Phillies Turf. And they're off. 
Salsa Bullet fires right out of stall two and heads out for the early lead, but Blue-Eyed Sweetie comes up to her from the outside. Runaway Joan between Phillies, then Blue Angel Express. Como Star is checking badly down along the inside, been passed now by fashionable Elsa, litigating Miramichi Babe Holidays at the farm near the back of the pack. Looks like a very easy pace for Salsa Bullet and Abar Koa as they take the field to the first turn. Salsa Bullet without a whole lot of pressure on the front end, and she is the leader right now from Blue-Eyed Sweetie, who's got a good stalking trip in that second spot. Fashionable Elsa is wide out on the turn while Runaway Joan takes the inside path. They're followed by Litigating, who's a midfield fifth right now and about four and a half lengths from the lead. Then Blue Angel Express. There goes Holidays at the Farm. Holidays at the Farm is making an early bid way out on the outside. Miramichi Babe following her and Como Star trails. The quarter was slow, 25 and two. And the half even slower, 52 and four. Very easy fractions for Salsa Bullet as she leads the vanguard to the far turn. Blue-eyed Sweetie close enough if good enough. A fashionable also the far side while runaway Joan Butt looks for racing room down along the inside. She doesn't have any right now. She's tucked in about a two lengths off the lead. Litigating runs fifth. Holidays at the farm is in the clear. She's got four lengths to come. Then Blue Angel Express, Miramichi Babe, Como Star is the trailer. And Salsa Bullet still in front. Fashionable Elsa coming at her three wide. Now Blue-Eyed Sweetie's got to go. She's not doing enough at this point. Holidays at the farm is way out on the outside as they try to chase down Salsa Bullet. And Salsa Bullet has something left after those early easy fractions. Holidays at the farm surging in the final 16th. Salsa Bullet, Holidays at the farm, and Salsa Bullet pulled it off. Salsa Bullet heady ride from Abar Coa. They win the John Franks Juvenile Phillies turf over Holidays at the farm. Salsa Bullet, another horse that had uh, that we've seen at Saratoga, a number of Saratoga uh, alums in the uh, in the series on Saturday. And this horse had broken her maiden at Saratoga, then stopped on the way to Florida at Laurel to finish second in a turf sprint and allowance company. And here gets to the front, sets a rather leisurely pace for herself, and never looks back, holding sway by a by three quarters of a length over another horse we saw at Saratoga Holidays at the farm who had won a Keeneland allowance race most recently, Blue-Eyed Sweetie, a, uh, a survivor of the wars down in Florida, completes the order of the top three. Salsa Bullet is a two-year-old Bay Philly, a daughter of Omega Code from Luricon by Lure. Bred in Florida by Harold J. Plumley and owned by Commonwealth Stable, trained by Seth Benzel and ridden to victory by Ibar Coa, Salsa Bullet covers the mile and a 16th and 147.07. Next up, fillies and mares in the Elmer Hubeck distaff. And they're all in line. And they're off. Perfect start. Trip for AJ heading out toward the lead. Amazing right there with her from the outside. Gator Brew is just off their flanks. Third, successful song. Fourth and maybe walk wide as they make their way to the first turn. Then Joni's Catch, who's already about six or seven lengths off the lead. One proud lady behind that even rode second last. And Musical Romance is last of the eight as the Phillies and Mares work toward the back stretch. Amazing has come away with the lead from Trip for AJ, who is coming right back to the leader, this time from the outside. The quarter was 24 and 2. Amazing three quarters of a length from Trip for AJ, who's got a good stalking trip. Gator Brew runs along in third. Successful song was three wide around that first turn, but she's in the clear and less than four lengths off the lead. Joni's Cat shuffled back fifth. Then one proud lady who's eight lengths off the pace. Even Road still second last. Musical Romance yet to uncoil with her run. She's got 11 lengths to make up on Amazing, who takes him through the opening half mile in a pretty easy 49 seconds flat. Easy fractions for these good fillies and mares. Amazing and trip for AJ getting away from the rest of the field. Successful song is third, but now she is seven or eight lengths back of the dueling leaders. And here comes trip for AJ to the outside of Amazing. Amazing inside. Trip for AJ outside. They are all alone past the quarter pole. Joni's catch is rallied up into third. She's still got five or six lengths to make up. Musical Romance trying to get involved in the back of the pack. And Amazing has repelled trip for AJ. Amazing running a good one this afternoon. She's back in front by three. Joni's catching musical romance are the main dangers as Amazing's drifting out just a bit. Amazing in front, then Joni's catch. Musical romance up the inside. Joni's catch catching Amazing. That one tight. Joni's catch or Amazing. Too tight to call. Musical romance third.
Joni's Catch picks up the win at 12 to 1 over a pretty established group of fillies. Horses like Trip for AJ and Successful Song had been knocking heads pretty competitively over the course of the year here, but Joni's Catch pulls off the upset victory by a neck over Amazing, another horse that we saw at Saratoga several races back in her past performances. She had finished a good second in Allowance Company up here. Musical Romance rounds out the top three. Joni's Catch is a chestnut filly, a daughter of first tour from Caught Speeding by St. Pilato. Bred in Florida by the Rose Family Stable and owned by the Breeders, trained by Barry Rose and ridden to victory by Javier Santiago, Joni's Catch covers the mile in the 16th and 148.73. We'll round things out in Florida with the Carl Rose Classic for older horses. And they're off in the Classic, and it was an absolutely perfect start for all six. They are right across the track. Rivers Run Riley now asserting himself in the early furlong, and he is going sprinting out for the lead. Bird Run going to keep him company from the second spot. Fly by Phil drops in third. They're followed now by King Gidra, the favorite Duke of Mischief, is running fifth at this point. He's about three wide as they go around the first turn. No speed at all from Dream Maestro. He is last of the six-pack, and now about nine lengths back of Rivers Run Riley and jockey Carlos Olivero. 23 and 2, a solid opening quarter for a mile and an eighth, and Rivers Run Riley leads it over a length now. Bird Run's got a stalking spot there, second. These two are clear of fly by Phil. Now Duke of Mischief is getting closer. Duke of Mischief is clear in fourth right now, and only about four lengths off the lead. And these four have moved away from the others. King Gidra and Dream Maestro. They went the half in 48 and 1, so an easy second quarter for Rivers Run Riley but now Bird Run is getting closer from the outside. Rivers Run Riley, his lead is down to about a neck. Here's Bird Run up to challenge from the outer. Duke of Mischief gliding by flyby Phil. He is into third and gaining on the two leaders as they run into the far turn. Bird Run sticks his neck out in front. Here comes Dream Maestro gliding up three wide and the two favorites have it as they go midpoint on the turn. Bird Run working harder to keep off Duke of Mischief. They've moved away from Rivers Run Riley, then fly by Phil. Dream Maestro trying to get involved in the back of the pack, but it is Duke of Mischief and Bird Run together as they straighten away. Duke of Mischief, the outside, and Abar Koa. Bird Run coming back under Rajiv Mirage, and he's back in front. It's Bird Run. Duke of Mischief couldn't get by him. Dream Maestro runs third, then King Gidra, and Bird Run wins the Carl G. Rose Classic. Tight for place and show, either Duke of Mischief or or Dream Maestro. Bird Run picks up the win, a familiar name to New York fans. He is now 5 for 15 lifetime. If I'm not mistaken, he is a uh, track record holder or uh, a, the horse that tied a track record about a year or so ago at Belmont. Obviously a horse with quite a bit of ability when he uh, gets it in high gear. He had run in a couple of uh, stakes in, in the past, both times finishing fifth. Here he gets in with the Florida Breds and uh, picks up his second consecutive victory off of a non-winners of three at Belmont most recently. Duke of Mischief rounds out the uh, into the second spot off of a uh, decent performance last time out at Monmouth Park. Dream Maestro rounds out the top three. The winner Bird Run is a four-year-old chestnut son of Bird Stone from Run Like Martha by Jolie's Halo. Bred in Florida by Arthur I. Appleton and owned by Oxbow Racing Limited, trained by Bill Mott and ridden to victory by Rajiv Murat. Bird Run covers the mile in a furlong, 154.47. We'll pause now for a brief message, and when we return, we'll be heading to Kentucky. Churchill Downs had a nice stake on Saturday for the three-year-olds. Please stay with us.
This portion of the program brought to you by the Teletheater at 711 Central Avenue in Albany. All the fun, all the action, all year round. Capital OTV, the region's premier horse racing simulcast facility, featuring the country's most prestigious tracks. Visit one of our more than 40 branches, wager at our easy bet locations, or open a Capital Bets account and wager today from the comfort of home. There's plenty of racing excitement for everyone. Your chances are better with Capital OTV. Welcome back to Horses and Courses. We'll continue now at Churchill Downs. We're on Saturday, the stakes feature on the turf for three-year-olds, the Commonwealth. And they're off in the Commonwealth turf. A little slow as Thunder Brew as he let them go. Stormy Lord and also Lighthouse Sound were very sharply away with Celtic New Year on the inside. And Yankee Fortune is also right up there as they pass the Twin Spires with a circuit ahead of them to the hedge Lighthouse Sound. Towards the outside is Stormy Lord. These are the first two. Yankee Fortune racing in third. Celtic New Year is taking a strong hold in fourth. Guy's Reward is racing in fifth. Don Cavallo is in sixth, followed in seventh on the inside side by you are outlaw in eighth position is dark cove as they go through the turn these are followed by tour allure and then mystic beauchoir towards the outside and then mr mardi gras at the back of the field thunder brew 24 and 2 the opening quarter mile as they go towards halfway in the seventh running of the commonwealth turf and stormy lord and jesus caston have now moved on to a lead of a length to the inside lighthouse sound is racing in second yankee fortune is in third in fourth position to the inside celtic new year followed by Don Cavallo. Three wide is Tura Lua as they go into the turn. Guy's reward is next to their field. Beauchoir is brutally wide. Mystic just in advance of him begins to make a bit of a move. Dark Cove did not handle the turn too well. Very wide Thunder Brew tries to come on as they make the turn with a quarter of a mile to go. And here on the outside is Yankee Fortune. To the inside Stormy Lord. These two hook up down the lane. Tura Lua is back in third. Mystic is in fourth. Guy's reward to the outside follows by Thunder Brew. Down towards the final furlong now. It's a battle of the greys. Yankee Fortune out in front to Tour Allure, who is closing with every stride in second. Guy's reward on the outside. Yankee Fortune is out in front. Yankee Fortune is going to win the Commonwealth Turf. Unbeaten five out of five on turf. Guy's reward and Tour Allure in a head bob for second and third, followed by Mystic and then Mr. Mardi Gras. Yankee Fortune, really a very interesting horse and one that uh, I certainly will follow over the course of the winter time. He showed his usual good alert break, was forwardly placed and scored by a length after taking command near the top of the stretch over long shot Guy's Reward, who had most recently won a poly track allowance race at Keeneland. Tura Lore, a horse that had won three in a row heading into this performance rallies into the third spot. Yankee Fortune is five for five on the turf, five for six lifetime, having won the Hawthorne Derby last time out, moving up in class a little bit that day. This is a pretty serious horse who looks like he has taken very, very nicely to the grass. Yankee Fortune is a gray son of Yankee gentleman from Madame Anne by Misielo. Bred in Kentucky by Burton Jones, owned by Harvey Clark and Andrew Albstein, trained by Kieran McLaughlin and ridden to victory by Victor, Victor Santiago. Yankee Fortune covers the mile in a 16th and 144.68. We'll head to Canada for a pair of stakes races over the weekend, starting things out Saturday. Stakes feature at Woodbine, three-year-olds and up at a mile in the 16th in the autumn. Ready for a start. They're at the post. Uh, they're off in the autumn stakes. Big Red Mike comes on in the center from the outside. Lord Justice is showing early speed. Smart Bit is gathered back in third position and barreling home as fourth. Southdale in hand in a fifth position, then a stunning stag and perfect bullet. Guay Pago trails this autumn stakes field and loose on the lead is a Lord Justice. He's already opened up four and a half lengths. Southdale to the inside of Big Red Mike. Southdale second now and Big Red Mike in third. Then Barrowing Home in a fourth position. Smart bid to the outside of Barrowing Home. Smart bid seven lengths from the front. Then a break of a length and a half to Perfect Bullet. Then Stunning Stag and Guay Pago. And free wheeling it out there is Lord Justice. That quarter was in 24 seconds. The half in 48 and 1. Less than four furlongs to go now. 
Lord Justice by two and a half, three. Down to the inside, barreling home. A smart bid is between horses. Southdale is out there three wide. The Durham Cup winner, Southdale's just two and a half lengths off the lead. Big Red Mike's being hard ridden and losing ground. Stunning Stag begins to gain some ground and there goes Southdale. Southdale's making a move. Smart bids called on for run between horses and down to the inside is Lord of Justice. Stunning Stag closing down the center of the track. Southdale, a precarious lead. Stunning Stag, full of run, just blew by Southdale. Stunning Stag and this field falls to Stunning Stag in the Autumn Stakes. It's going to be tight for second. Smart build held for second. A show photo between Perfect Bullet and Guaypago. Stunning Stag picks up the victory. A horse that's run against some pretty nice horses and has put together a pretty good year. Uh, won an allowance race last time out. Prior to that had been third in the Durham Cup and third in the Presque Isle Mile to Gallego who came back and ran well in Breeders' Cup competition last weekend. Stunning Stag rallies to score going away by almost four over smart bid with long shot perfect bullet completing the top three. The winner, Stunning Stag, is a dark bay or brown gelded son of Running Stag from Midday Fun by the Prime Minister. Bred in Ontario by Adina Springs and owned by Janice Attard, trained by Sid Attard and ridden to victory by Jerry Olguin, Stunning Stag covers the mile in the 16th and 142.75. Next up at Woodbine, Sunday stakes feature the glorious song for two-year-old fillies. They're off in the glorious song stakes and Nina Fever broke in stride and Street Prize comes on to the inside of Nina Fever now switches to the outside. And it's Street Prize who wants the front and comes on in between horses to take the lead and Nina Fever's going to run with Street Prize and these two hook up early and taken in hand as Fun Filled who's relaxed in third position, three lengths off the lead. Then there's a break of five to Anne's Beauty, then Athena Moore, and where did she go? And it's Nina Fever through an opening quarter in 22 and two, just under a half mile remaining now in the glorious song. And Nina Fever leads it by length. Watch closely by Street Prize in second. Then there's a three and a half length break to Fun Filled in third. Getting closer is Anne's Beauty from fourth. Then five to Athena Moore, and trailing is where did she go? That is a wicked half mile, 44 and four. Nina Fever and Jeffrey Sanchez takes a peek back, asks for more run as Street Prize, Anne's Beauty, and fun filled. Fast and furious on the outside, and they're into the stretch, and Nina Fever has paid the price for those quick splits and has been overtaken by Anne's Beauty, and it's Anne's Beauty on the outside. Nina Fever is fighting on courageously. Anne's Beauty and Nina Fever. Anne's Beauty on the outside by a hit in the glorious song. The Nina Fever and Fun Filled. Where did she go? Was fourth, 122 and three fifths. Anne's Beauty off of a maiden win last time out back in August, given a little bit of freshening time during the course of the fall, and she returns to score at 14 to 1 by a head over the odds on favored Nina Fever with fun filled back in third. The winner, Anne's Beauty, is a two year old daughter of Artie Schiller from Lucky Streak by Seawall. Bred in Kentucky by Richard Forbush and Doug Oliver, owned by Robert Smithen and trained by Paul Attard, ridden to victory by David Clark. Anne's Beauty covers the 7 and 122.64. We'll head out to the West Coast now for a pair of stakes in Southern California. Hollywood Park on Saturday hosting the Hollywood Turf Cup at a mile and a half on grass. They're off. Temple City has asked for speed, and Temple City will take charge going into the far turn the first time. Marlang is also sharp early. These two, one, two. Big shot, Sid, and worth repeating, our third and fourth. Then comes unusual suspect, wears the remote and treat gently, and the early trailer is Buenos Dias. To the top of the stretch for the first time, Temple City wanted the lead, and he's got it. For Joe Talamo, Temple City into the lane the first time around, and he leads Marlang by two lengths. Big Shot Sid is a similar margin back in the third. Then it's another two to worth repeating in the orange cap. Unusual suspect just outside of him. Where's the remote is in the center of the turf course, and he's about seven off the lead. The mare treat gently just inside of him. 
Buenos Dias is still the trailer. Eight lengths from first to last, less than one lap to go in the 28th. Hollywood Turf Cup and Temple City and Marlang are one, two. Temple City into the clubhouse turn with a length and three quarters on Marlang, who is now content to sit in second. Big Shot Sid, unusual suspect, are still third and fourth, and they're about three off the lead. Where's the remote? Has a wide trip. Treat Gently is a bit headstrong now between horses. Pink Cap between them, and about five off the lead. Worth repeating's at the rail. Buenos Dias is still the trailer, and Temple City is still the leader. Temple City up the back stretch. Now five furlongs from the money in the Turf Cup. He leads it by a length and a quarter from Mar Lang, who continues to gallop along in second. Unusual Suspect is less than three from the front, actually about two lengths off the lead is unusual suspect. Then comes Big Shot Sid, pushed along at the rail. Treat Gently is still in traffic. She is fifth and about four from the front. Where's the remote? Four wide, leaving the backstretch, joined by both Worth Repeating and Buenos Dias. And Where's the remote has dropped out last. Something's wrong with Where's the remote, leaving the backstretch. They round the far turn. Temple City is the leader. Marlang has backed out, so unusual suspect is now in second. Now Treat Gently is in in the clear. She gets a tap of the right-handed whip and is within three of the lead. Buenos Dias passing horses from the back of the pack. Temple City a final furlong. Unusual suspect now much closer in second. Temple City's only a half length in front. Buenos Dias has moved up into third. He's got a chance too. Temple City unusual suspect. Unusual suspect takes the lead. Unusual suspect! The 28th Hollywood Turf Cup goes to unusual suspect over Temple City. Buenos Dias finish third. A little hard to run a mile and a half race on the grass exactly one week after the Breeders' Cup turf, but and call it a grade one, but uh, unusual suspect does score the 10 to one upset victory over the pace setter Temple City who was rebounding off a dread per dreadful performance last time out in the Hawthorne Gold Cup. Buenos Dias rallies into third. The winner, the usual suspect, was picking up his first win of the year. He had been second in the Cal Cup Classic, sixth behind Champ Pegasus, who was the eventual Breeders' Cup turf runner up in the Hirsch a couple of races back. Unusual Suspect is a dark bay or brown son of unusual heat from Penn Pont by Crested Wave. Bred in California by David Abrams, owned by Barry Abrams, Barry, David, and Diane Abrams, trained by Barry Abrams and ridden to victory by Corey Nakatani. Unusual Suspect covers the mile and a half in 225.83. Next up, we'll head right back to the West Coast. Sunday's stakes feature Phillies and Mares going six in the Playa del Rey. They're off. Holding her ground and Sister Dawn shows speed. Hallelujah Trail and subsidized. Mother Ruth was slow into stride and she's midfield. Then comes Southern Fireball and the trailer is Silver Swallow. Match racing up the backstretch. Holding her ground outside. Sister Dawn at the rail and they throw it down early. Holding her ground half ahead in front of Sister Dawn in second. Mother Ruth races in third and she's coming after the front runners now. Two and a quarter from the lead. Southern Fireball just inside of her. Hallelujah Trail is fifth with four lengths to make up. Subsidized shuffles back and loses the second to last position to Silver Swallow. And here's Silver Swallow within two and a half lengths of the lead. She will be four wide. Holding her ground, Mother Ruth and Sister Don right across the racetrack. They are joined by Longshot Hallelujah Trail. Southern Fireballs two from the front. Sister Silver Swallow in the center and subsidized final furlong they run. Sister Don narrowly in front. Mother Ruth holding her ground to the outside Hallelujah Trail. Silver Swallow now kicks into gear but but she's still two lengths behind Mother Ruth, who has taken over the lead. At the rail, Sister Don. Silver Swallow closes. Sister Don retakes the lead, and Sister Don wins. The third Playa del Rey stakes goes to Sister Don over Mother Ruth. Silver Swallow is third and subsidized. Finish fourth. Sister Dawn picks up the victory here by a neck. She sat just off the pace inside of horses, was pretty relentless in the drive to score by a neck over Mother Ruth with Silver Swallow rallying from off the pace to third. Sister Dawn is a Bay filly, a daughter of Indian Charlie from Joy's Flame by Strawberry Road. Bred in Kentucky by Hinkle Farm, owned by Dawn and Ike Thrash, trained by John Sadler and ridden to victory by Joel Rosario. Sister Dawn covers the six in 109.94. We'll pause for a brief message, and when we return, we'll head back home to New York for racing from the Big A. Please stay with us.
This portion of the program brought to you by Capital Bets. For more information, go to CapitalOTB.com. Catch the excitement with Capital OTB Online. It's now easier than ever with internet wagering at CapitalOTB.com. Wager online and get track odds, online contests, membership specials, and it's secure and fan-friendly. Whether it's a big stakes day like the Kentucky Derby, Belmont Stakes, Traverse Stakes, Breeders' Cup, or just a great day of racing, wagering online at CapitalOTB.com is always simple and easy. Sign up today at CapitalOTB.com because your chances are better with Capital OTB. Welcome back to Horses and Courses. We will continue now at the Big A on Saturday. The stakes feature fillies and mares on the turf in the Long Island Handicap. And they're off. Me Love, Tarip, and the Mekong Melody in between those two. And it's Tarip who takes the initiative here. Tarip, from that inside post, will be the early leader. Me Love is there on the outside and up and in between the Mekong Melody. Changing skies, following Me Love into the far turn. And Daverin down inside and sweet and flawless. Trails the field, five lengths front to back in the very early stages here of this marathon. So Tarip is in control of the early pace, shadowed by the gray Me Love. Mekong Melody tucked away neatly at the inside. Changing skies, Johnny Velasquez has her covered up in behind the gray me love. And then Davern is also covered up and in hand. And loping along quite easily at the back of the pack is sweet and flawless as they come by us now for the first time. So there's seven furlongs remaining here. And Tarip has led through the opening half mile in 51 and 3 fifths second. Mekong Melody down inside, changing skies, now switched to the three path. We'll try to get around Me Love as they move into the clubhouse turn. Up top, it is still Tarip. Me Love runs along in second. Changing Skies is in the clear now. Mekong Melody down toward the inside. Sweet and Flawless is now asked to pick it up just a bit. Davron is on hold while in traffic. Very tight pack now. Just three and a half lengths separates the entire field after a tepid three quarters and 17 flat. Now there's four furlongs remaining here. Tarip has been the leader throughout, shadowed throughout by Me Love. The favorite changing skies sets up outside now as they move into the far turn. Velasquez says go with changing skies, and now they're making their move for the lead. Mekong Melody is now fourth toward the inside. Deveron is starting to pick it up. Sweet and Flawless starting to tail off, and now the field turns for home. Tarip still on top. Changing skies, motors up right alongside her now, and Daveron is cut loose down the outside. Mekong Melody's coming up the rail in the final furlong. Mekong Melody, with a burst of energy, takes charge from the inside. Mekong Melody finishing full of run here beneath Alex Solis to score decisively. Daveron was second, and it was close for third there between Tarip, changing skies, may have been off the board with a lot of money bet to show. Interesting photo for third. Mekong Melody, who's had kind of an unusual series of past performances of late, scores the victory over Daveron with long shot 24 to one shot Tarrup, completing the order of the top three, changing skies in off of a very impressive grade one performance in the Flower Bowl, Skip the Breeders' Cup for this spot was the odds-on favorite and had to settle for fourth in the field of six. The winner, Mekong Melody, was 10th in the E.P. Taylor prior to this race, won the Flaming Page in her previous start and was 10th before that off a win uh, last time or in her previous form cycle. So this is a horse that over the last five races has won and then finished 10th repeatedly. So maybe that's the pattern to look for with Mekong Melody. She is a bay daughter of Cape Cross from Ninny Princess by Niniski, bred in Ireland by David Egan and owned by the breeder, trained by Roger Atfield and ridden to victory by Alex Solis. Mekong Melody picks up the victory in covering the mile and a half in 230.74. A trio of stakes on Sunday at the Big A and we'll start things out with the New York Stallion Divi Series, Staten Island Division, Phillies and Mares going seven furlongs, the offspring of New York Stallions. And they're off. 
Winnie VLT is on the outside. Mother Russia on the rail. And in between those two, it's healthy debate. Field moving up the back stretch. And healthy debate will battle with Mother Russia. Mother Russia, the leader now. Healthy debate backs off just a bit. Runs back in second. And we need VLT's races third. Over on the inside, it's Big Brownie fourth. Then Raffi's Rose and Bretton Woods. Down the back stretch, heavily favored Mother Russia is the leader. Mother Russia, uncontested lead at this point. Healthy debate second. We need VLTs in the clear in the far outside. Big Brownie on the fence and running in fourth. Raffi's Rose and Bretton Woods around the far turn. Still in control is favored Mother Russia. Now the challenges are coming. In between horses, we need VLTs. And on the outside, Raffi's Rose. Off the turn into the stretch. Mother Russia still on top. Raffi's Rose there on the outside. We need VLTs in between horses. And Mother Russia's in deep water here. Now back to fourth. Bretton Woods comes through on the inside. Bretton Woods is now the leader. We need VLTs in Raffi's Rose. Mother Russia off the board. Under the wire, it's Big Brownie to do it. We need VLTs close for third. That was actually Big Brownie, in fact, that did cross the line first, kicking clear after getting through on the inside after a bit of a three-way duel up front involving We Need VLTs, the favored Mother Russia, and the speedy, healthy debate. Big Brownie and John Velasquez sitting off that pace duel and drawing clear to win by almost six at 12 to one over We Need VLTs. Rafi's Rose completes the order of the top three. And Mother Russia, unfortunately, after getting pressed very hard in the early going by healthy debate, settles for a fourth spot here as the heavy favorite. So if you had played these two races, played every horse in the uh, Long Island and in the Staten Island division, the stallion series to show you would have been cashing uh two dollars to show would have generated 126 dollars worth of uh of returns a pretty nice roi in the show pools there is obviously the bridge jumpers were out in fourth on those two favorites big brownie recently arrived in the barn of leah germati and finished fourth in an open allowance race last time out against some fairly good fillies she is a chestnut daughter of wheel away from mythical brownie by lord avey Bred in New York by Elaine, Elaine Foulard and owned by Leah Germati and the Wild Rill Farm. Trained by Leah Germati and ridden to victory by John Velasquez, Big Brownie covers the 7 and 122.91. Next up, we'll head on to the Aqueduct Turf Course, three year old fillies in the memories of silver. And they're off. Worst case scenario racing for that lead. And on the far outside, Island Time is there and moving over to the rail up for the lead, Ultimate Class. So Ultimate Class takes the lead into the first turn. In perpetuity gets hung out there, three wide. Worst case scenario comes up the inside. Island Time between those two. And then unbridled humor. Sea Road, 7th, Hathier, 8th, Profiteroles is ninth, and five lengths back to Fotosina. The trailer up the backstretch run. On top, ultimate class. Pressed a bit by worst case scenario, second by two. In perpetuity runs along in third. Unbridled humor is down now on the inside. In fourth, Island Times on the outside, now fifth. Now as the field approaches the far turn here with three furlongs to go. It has been ultimate class the whole way. And extending that lead now to almost three lengths. Ultimate class getting away. Worst case scenario, running second in perpetuity is now third. Unbridled humor is fourth. Johnny Velasquez asking more of that one, but unbridled humor's got a lot to do yet. Six or seven lengths behind. Ultimate class, who hits the eighth pole clear by five. Here's zero on the outside, and unbridled humor still in with a fighting chance. Ultimate Class desperately trying to hang in there. Unbridled Humor coming hard. Profederals is there on the outside. Here's the wire. At the end, it was a photo finish. Unbridled Humor may have nailed Ultimate Class in the last stride. It's a photo finish. 
and Profiteroles was third. Unbridled humor, very impressive maiden winner here at Saratoga. Headed down to Keeneland for an allowance win last time out. Now returns to New York, gets in off the AE list, breaks from post 10 and wins by a game nose as the favorite, saving the bridge jumpers this time as she scores over ultimate class with profiteroles back in the third spot. Unbridled Humor is a gray three-year-old daughter of distorted humor from Devotion Unbridled by Unbridled. Bred in Florida by Live Oak Stud and owned by the breeder, trained by Graham Motion and ridden to victory by John Velasquez, Unbridled Humor covers the mile on the turf in 138.21. Next up, back to Stallion Series competition as Sunday afternoon winds down the Thunder Rumble division for three and up going seven. And they're off. Sharp start for Driven by Success, who's already in front. General Maximus away second on the inside and looking for that lead, and General Maximus grabs it. Driven by Success, though, right there, and a speed duel develops in the opening 100 yards. Five lengths back to the third horse, make note. Uncle T7 and good card completing the field. General Maximus dueling with Driven by Success. They duel through a quarter and 22 and two-fifths seconds. There's a break of almost nine back to the rest of them. Uncle T7 is on the inside of Make Note. Still trailing the field is good card. Around the far turn, the battle continues here between General Maximus and Driven by Success. A half and 44 and two-fifths seconds. Six lengths behind them, Make Note is third. General Maximus and Driven by Success have been head-to-head -head here the whole way, and they enter the stretch together with virtually nothing between them. Driven by Success, General Maximus together for six furlongs, and finally, Driven by Success begins to prevail. General Maximus is giving way. Good card coming on, but they're down to the line, and Driven by Success gets the job done, running hard every step of the way. It was a photo for second between General Maximus and Good Card. Driven by Success picks up the victory, turning the tables on General Maximus, who had beaten him last time out in the Hudson Handicap on New York Showcase Day a few weeks back. Here he scores the victory by three and a quarter lengths over that rival who had set the early pace. 20 to one shot, good card, rounds out the top three off short rest he had run on November 10th in his prior start. The winner driven by success is a chestnut gelding, a son of precise end from a fleet closer by a fleet. Bred in New York by New Dawn Stud Limited, owned by Rapoli Stable and trained by Todd Pletcher, ridden to victory by John Velasquez, who swept the stakes on Sunday afternoon at Aqueduct. Driven by success covers the seven in 121.74. That'll wrap up this week's edition of Horses and Courses. Thank you for joining us. We hope you'll be able to join us again next week as we take a look at more great stakes racing action from around the country. Until then, I'm Jean Wood. Have a great week at the races.